Thank you for joining us. I'm Riley Livingston. We begin tonight with breaking news in Itawamba County. A standoff is underway as authorities are on the scene. Our Cash Matlock is there and has more. Cash? That's right, Riley. We're here in Itawamba County. I'm on Alice Hill Road in Golden, Mississippi. Now, Alice Hill Road is fo formerly known as Snake Smith Road, if you're more familiar with that. And we're in, in the middle of what police tell me is a hostage, hostage situation. Now, I believe um, there are, there's a house behind me. You can't really see it. It's really dimly lit over here. There's no street lights on. But the house has three people in it. Now, there is one man who is armed, and the other two are believed to be hostages. It's believed to be another man, as well as a 10-year-old girl. Now, police tell me they have been in contact with the 10-year-old girl, and she is safe. Um, I spoke with the sheriff of Inawaba County. He tells me that he's waiting on more backup to arrive before they make a decision on whether or not they're going to enter the house. Now, for those of you just now joining us, I just want to reiterate some points. We are in the middle of a hostage situation on Alice Hill Road. Three people in the house. One man has a gun. The other two are hostages. Uh, the, one of the hostages is a 10-year-old girl, and that's really all the information we have now. So live in Itawamba County, I'm Cash Malik. I'll send it back to you, Riley, in the studio. Thanks so much, Cash. A victim involved in an early morning shooting in Jackson has died. 40-year-old Damian King was taken to a local hospital after suffering multiple gunshot wounds to his upper body shortly after 1 a.m. this Saturday morning. Officers believe that shots were fired during an argument in Deer Park Street near Poindexter Street. Police believe they know who shot King, but they will not release his name until his identity is verified and more is known about the incident. The investigation is ongoing. Flooding. Flooding continues to be a concern in parts of Mississippi. Locally, high water in places has caused minor flooding, including in the city of Columbus. Highway 50 in East Columbus has been partially covered in water all day long, and the Lexapalila Creek is expected to peak at minor flood stage later on tonight. While our area did experience some flooding, the hardest hit areas are in South Mississippi and West Alabama. Areas from Hattiesburg to Laurel to Meridian still are seeing many road closures tonight. More rain is already falling, falling tonight in parts of the WCBI area. There are still some concerns for flooding. For that, we turn things over to meteorologist Jacob Dickey with a first look at our forecast. Jacob? Hey, Riley, we indeed do have some more rain already falling across the area here across the south in places that don't need those showers and storms. Locally here, it seems like the heaviest band of rain is across parts of areas south of US 82 here from Pickens County through southern Knoxville, northern Kemper County down towards the community of Philadelphia. A lot of heavy rain here, but we're not seeing any lightning with that. Other showers continue across the Golden Triangle area and really across area wide. Those showers will continue overnight tonight. As far as how much more rain we're going to add through Tuesday morning, another one to two inches with local Locally higher amounts is expected. We also have the chance for some strong to severe storms Monday from 7 a.m. to 7 p.m. Coming up in just a bit. I'm going to time out the showers and storms more for you, especially looking at Mondays. And we've got the chance for a little bit of winter weather in the area. I've got those details in just a bit. Thanks, Jacob. If you plan on having a few drinks this New Year's Eve, it's a good idea to have a plan in place before getting on the road. The Columbus Police Department, the Lowndes County Sheriff's Office, the Mississippi Highway Patrol, and the Columbus Lowndes Drug Task Force are teaming up for several safety sobriety checkpoints. Columbus Police Chief Fred Shelton says our purpose is simple. Follow the law and don't drive under the influence or of alcohol or drugs. Impaired driving is illegal and unsafe for everyone on the road. Shelton says officers will have zero tolerance for people driving under the influence. Checkpoints locations will not be revealed ahead of time and all four agencies are sending extra officers to staff those checkpoints. And speaking of a little bit to drink, business is good, says a package store employee in Columbus. Wines, etc., has been busy since the kickoff of the holiday season. The package store located on Highway 45 North says sales have steadily increased since Thanksgiving and will spike on Monday, New Year's Eve. So what are you buying? Wines, etc., employee Jeff Cafe says you're buying everything. It seems that video is not coming up right now, but we will try again later this evening. Um, money, a money Q and A survey, survey says 360 million glasses of sparkling wine are consumed in the U.S. each New Year's Eve. 
A new furniture factory will soon be opening in Lee County, and now they are on the search for new employees. WCBI's Chad Groening has more. This weekend, Sutter Street Manufacturing, the manufacturing division of North Carolina based Williams Sonoma, held a job fair for furniture professionals. It is the first time the company has opened a factory in North Mississippi, and Human Resources Manager Phil Jackson conducted interviews. Sutter Street's a great opportunity for experienced furniture manufacturers or, or training opportunities in the, in the furniture industry. Uh, Sutter Street is going to be building business that is coming back from China that's currently being built in China and those manufacturing jobs are coming into North Mississippi. Being a, a resident of North Mississippi my entire life, I think that's a great opportunity. Jackson says Sutter Street will be immediately creating between 60 and 80 new jobs in the area, including sewers who will use these brand new machines that are ready to be installed in the factory. He says eventually the facility in Baldwin will employ 350 people. One of the big reasons for relocation into North Mississippi is, is the furniture experience that is in this area and, and the quality of the, of the furniture manufacturers in this area. The people that we can bring in and work with, uh, we are very excited about that and we think that is one of the primary reasons for relocating to North Mississippi. And Jackson says once the plant is up and running early next month, they will be churning out pieces like these. We are building a high-end, high-quality piece of furniture, and, and it will be done right, done right on the lines. We'll be building stationary furniture, sofas, love seats, chairs, sectionals for our West Elm brand of furniture for our Williamson Oma stores. Jackson says some support personnel are scheduled to begin on January 7th, and upholstery lines will start January 14th. Chad Groening, WCBI News, Baldwin. Sutter Street says it hopes to reach 350 employees within the next five years. A friendly exchange quickly takes a turn for the worse. More on that after the break. Welcome back. We've entered the second week of the partial government shutdown, and more agencies have announced they are cutting back on services or closing altogether until Congress and the President can agree on a way to fund the government. At the heart of the debate is a proposed wall on the southern border. Nicole Killian is at the White House with the latest. Homeland Security Secretary Kirsten Nielsen toured overcrowded detention centers in El Paso and Arizona over the weekend, where the federal government is holding migrant families. No photographers were allowed to follow her. She's called for more thorough initial health screenings for migrants, as well as secondary screenings for every child following the deaths of two Guatemalan children this month. Saturday, President Trump tweeted, any deaths of children or others at the border are strictly the fault of the Democrats and their pathetic immigration policies that allow people to make the long trek thinking they can enter our country illegally. The president is pledging to keep the federal government partially closed until Congress agrees to have U.S. taxpayers help fund a border wall. Friday, the president threatened to close the entire southern border. The president is here at the White House having canceled his annual New Year's Eve party at his private Florida club. He agreed to lower his demand for a full $5 billion to build a border wall, but Democrats say the new number, $2.5 billion, is still unacceptable. The president ought to get over this uh, uh, syndrome of his television show, you're fired, you're shut down. Meantime, the Environmental Protection Agency began furloughing workers Friday night, and the Smithsonian Institution, which runs 19 museums and the National Zoo, will close all locations after the new year. The shutdown is forcing hundreds of thousands of federal workers to stay home or work without pay. Nicole Killian, CBS News, the White House. House Democrats have pledged to introduce legislation to reopen the government when they take control January 3rd. A woman in Oklahoma caught a burglar inside her car. So, she locked him inside. Police reports say the woman held him captive until the police got there. When officers arrived, neighbors surrounded the car, yelling they had caught him. One even with a baseball bat. Police arrested the burglar with a felony warrant out for his arrest. What one woman thought would be a simple exchange turns into an iPhone robbery. Here's the story. Okay, yeah, this is, this is the one right here. 
But yeah, that's what he looked like. It was supposed to be a simple exchange. And so he said, well, I can come to you. Keisha Ralston found a buyer online for her iPhone. Big Bang Fred. The man drove to her workplace but didn't pull into the parking lot. Which should have been a red flag to me in the first place. The surveillance camera was rolling. I was handing him the phone and at the same time he was handing me like a little wad of money. Immediately, Keisha could tell something was wrong. I was like, oh my God, no, this is not, you know, it's not real. It was too green yeah. to be money. I threw the money back at him and tried to reach for my phone. But at the same time, Big Bank Fred hit the accelerator. I wasn't going to let go. <laughs> like, my okay. feet were dragging the ground. Okay. I don't know how I did it, yeah. like holding myself mm -hmm. to the car, you right. know. Right. The car was moving too fast for Keisha to safely ungrip. He finally slowed down a little bit, you know, to where I was able to just let myself go and fall in the street. Now with big bruises and sore toes, Keisha has a message for others selling things online. You have to be really careful, um, and especially on social media, you know, just really check them out. So the police told me that, you know, that they would meet me and that they would watch any type of transactions. Because she knows what happened to her could have been a lot worse. He could have had a gun. I really just thank God that... <laughs> you know, that he kept me from being hurt really bad. Quick check on our Saturday night for our 155th serving overseas in Kuwait. They get a chance for some showers actually on Monday, but lots of dry weather for them. Locally here at home, we get the chance for some more heavy rain, some strong storms, and even a chance for a little bit of wintry weather. I've got those details for you coming up here after the break. AccuWeather forecast with meteorologist Jacob Dickey. We're seeing some showers across the area, and that's putting a few raindrops on the lens, particularly in Louisville and uh, Vernon, Alabama. But other spots are staying dry so far. That will not last too much longer for us. Temperatures this evening are in the 40s for many of us. We're at 49 in Columbus with the north wind, 49 also in Amory, 46 in Calhoun City, Oxford at 45. Some of those showers are mainly off to the south of US 82 here. Still a few off towards I-55 near Grenada, as well as in Carroll and Montgomery County. But the heaviest rain seems to be here from Aliceville down towards Sugarlock down towards Philadelphia as it continues to move off to the north and to the east. Showers will continue over tonight. They'll be on and off, not a complete washout, but temperatures slowly falling into the low 40s for many of us overnight tonight. We will stay cloudy and cool. 43 will be the low in Columbus and in West Point and in Starkville. 41 in Tupelo, perhaps a few upper 30s in Corinth, Ripley, and Oxford. I've got you at 38. We'll still see 45 for our low in Macon overnight tonight. Then on Sunday, more clouds and more showers in the morning. Temperatures slowly rising into the 50s. By the afternoon, I think more rain looks to be the case as we head into the afternoon and evening hours. 56 will be the high in Columbus, 56 in West Point. This is Sunday afternoon, 56 also in Ackerman. West Alabama, much the same, 54 in Solja and Vernon checking in at 55 on Sunday afternoon. And then up towards Tupelo, low to mid 50s, I've got 54 in Tupelo, 53 in Boonville, Bruce and Calhoun City checking in at 54 on Sunday afternoon. Here's the showers coming through tonight, still by 11 p.m., seeing a few of them here and there on and off again. Across our area by 5 a.m., a few more showers look to work into our area. They'll be very light overall, not expecting a whole lot of rain with these. By Sunday afternoon and evening, that's, that's when I think some of the heavier showers and storms will come into our area, particularly as we get into Sunday night. A warm front will lift to the north, and that will give a good chance for showers and even some thunderstorms Sunday night into Monday morning. It also puts us in the warm sector here, a lot of warm air coming in mon uh, Sunday night into Monday morning. Here's what that warm front does here Sunday in the afternoon, we're in the 50s. Monday morning, I think we're at 60. We're getting to near 70 by Monday afternoon, warming up overnight. And that also means we get the chance for some strong storms in our area. A marginal risk, a one out of five is issued for our area. That means we could see some gusty winds as well as some flash flooding. Overall, right now, the tornado threat looks very low. We're more concerned about a line of gusty showers coming through our area sometime between 7 a.m. and 7 p.m. Here's that line of gusty showers there along that cold front as it lifts off to the east. Then we dry out by Monday night into Tuesday. Still seeing some clouds then, but by Wednesday, more rain is expected. More showers in our area Tuesday night into Wednesday. Really an interesting setup here as we look at it. The moisture comes in from the south, and that gives us plenty of chances for rain. But if we can get a cutoff low to form off to our west here, that's going to wrap in some cooler air in the backside and could mean we could see some flurries or maybe even some snow in our area. Though it is not set in stone, we're keeping our eyes on that. As far as what is expected, heavy rain will continue one, two, maybe even three inches in spots can be expected over the next seven days. A very active forecast here. Again, some strong storms possible on Monday. We're in the warm sector near 70. Wednesday into Thursday is when we could see some of those showers. If we are able to get a little bit of wintry weather in, it'll be a Thursday through Thursday afternoon time frame most likely. We'll be keeping, your, keeping our eyes on it and keeping you updated here and online.
The 2019 Outback Bowl prep continues as MSU head football coach Joe Moorhead joins Iowa's Kirk Ferentz in the media today. More on that coming up next in sports. WCBI Sports exclusive coverage of the Outback Bowl live from Tampa is brought to you by OCH Regional Medical Center, Advanced Medicine Compassionate Care, Bank First, a better what a bank, member FDIC, and visit Columbus, the city that has it all. The Mississippi State football team continues their preparation for the 2019 Outback Bowl in Tampa, Florida. Our Tom Ebel took on day three today and has more on what makes this bowl game a little bit different than the others. Tom? Blair, the 2019 Outback Bowl, there's a lot of interesting parallels within it. Kirk Ferentz in his 20th season at Iowa, Joe Moorhead in his first, two opposite levels of experience in head coaching. Iowa making its sixth Outback Bowl appearance. Mississippi State, its first trip to Tampa, playing in the bowl game. And then Mississippi State and Iowa have never played a game of college football against one another. So a little piece of college football history here in Tampa as well. Both head coaches spending the day at the media hotel speaking about the upcoming matchup. The two are familiar with each other. Kirk Ferentz and Joe Moorhead going up against each other as Big Ten opponents. Ferentz obviously with Iowa and Joe Moorhead, the former offensive coordinator of Penn State. Ferentz says when you take a look at Mississippi State from this year, you see parallels from that Penn State offense, except for one big difference, quarterback Nick Fitzgerald. Probably the biggest similarity is they both, uh, in my mind, the quarterback was the catalyst. I think that's really obvious right now with Mississippi State. You look at the amount of carries he's had. Uh, relative to anybody in the conference, not, not just quarterbacks. Uh, you know, he is the, the, where everything starts with their offensive football team. And I felt the same way about uh, Penn State. You know, that quarterback's a tremendous player. You know, they look different, uh, but both of them are just their leaders, their winners. And, you know, so that, that's to me where it all kind of starts. And if you don't have an answer, somewhat of an answer, you're going to be in, in trouble there. I, I was offense does, you know, to me it would be similar to an LSU type you know, some traditional 21 and 12 personnel groupings, you know, physical offensive line, you know, quarterback that can beat you with his arm, obviously an excellent tight end and, you know, some game-breaking receivers. And defensively, I, I, we were actually discussing that as an offensive staff. I don't know that there's, uh, you know, one that really sticks out. You know, um, we see a bunch of three down in the conference, you know, not a, a ton of four down. Uh, but, uh, you know, certainly from a, um, from a production standpoint, you know, giving up 17 points a game, just over 100 rushing, and I, I don't even know if it's 300 total yards. Uh, Iowa's defensive production stacks up with, with anybody in the country. We were able to get one last look at the Mississippi State Bulldogs as they prepare for Iowa at Tampa Jesuit High School today. The Bulldogs going through more drills, more walkthrough, preparing for the Hawkeyes. This is the last open practice here in Tampa, so the next time we'll see the Bulldogs take a football field will be New Year's Day inside of Raymond James Stadium. No news is good news for the Bulldogs. Everyone remaining healthy, no any any kind of changes within the week. The only big news coming out of today, it comes to no surprise to anyone, is safety Jonathan Abrams announcing he will go to the NFL draft this upcoming April. So the Bulldogs just a couple more walkthroughs, a couple more practices over the next couple of days as they prepare for Iowa on Tuesday afternoon. Bulldogs, hey, they get to earn, go hard, practice hard, and they get to earn a trip to Bush Gardens today as part of the bull, bull festivities. So Mississippi State having a good time with that as well. Go over to our website, WCBI.com, for all of our coverage from this past week here in Tampa as we prepare for the Outback Bowl. And also coming up at 10, we'll hear more from head coach Joe Moorhead about the differences between being in the SEC for a season and his time spent in the Big Ten. But for now, reporting here in Tampa, Florida, Tom Ebel for WCBI Sports. Blair, we'll send it back to you in Columbus. All right, thanks, Tom. While football season is coming to an end, basketball season is here. And there were plenty of teams in action today as New Hope hosted their annual Trojan Holiday Classic. Starting things off, Starkville taking on... Jackson Academy, Jaleesa Outlaw gets things going with a nice shot from the corner to make it 4-0 for the Yellow Jackets. Jackson back on offense, Idalis fell with the steal, gets the ball to Outlaw, she does the rest, takes it to the rim for two more. And Outlaw was dangerous all game long, out in transition, pulls up for two, extends the lead 8-0. Second quarter, and Outlaw will be back at it again. Gets it to go with an and one opportunity to take back the lead. And Outlaw will be too much for Jackson Academy to handle as she helps the Yellow Jackets get the win 46 to 37. 
That's all for sports. We'll be right back with a last look at your forecast. All right, Riley, the Orange Bowl starts in a half an hour. Who's going to be the big winner? Ah. Uh. You know, I'm an Alabama fan, so you got, I got to go with my tide. I got to go with my tide. I'm, I'm Hey, open. I think lots of viewers would appreciate that. Some showers expected tonight and tomorrow. Could see some strong storms on Monday. We're keeping our eyes then again on Wednesday and Thursday. Maybe, maybe if we get a little cold air to mix in, that could mean some winter fun. We'll be keeping you updated here tonight at 10 as well and online. That'll be exciting. We'll see what happens. Yep. We hope everyone has a great night and come back and join us at 10.